I feel like we're the denim twins. The denim twins. Yada 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 yada. The denim twins. It's practical and comfortable. The denim twins. <sighs> People are gonna wonder how you live with me. <laughs> Quite nicely. Hey there, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Joni Simon and I'm so glad to have you here today. We're gonna to be cooking up another family recipe because I just think family recipes are where it's at. Not only are they time tested and delicious as well as a little bit nostalgic, but they all come with a great story. There's some sort of memory there in your back of your mind when you think of oh, family recipes. You've got one, right? One that's delicious and that just takes you right back to being a kid. Well, today's recipe is one of Mr. Simon's favorites. So I'm bringing Ryan in today to share with us the story behind his family's tostadas. Now, I've taken the original tostada recipe, kind of tweaked it up a little bit, made it a little bit more mine, but still delicious and still delivers a little bit of nostalgia to Mr. Simon. So let's go ahead and bring him in and hear the story of the tostadas. It was such a simple thing, but it was tasty and nutritious and, uh, and I don't know, and it was kind of a fun food to eat for a kid because I was probably, you know, I don't know, well, this was most of our family life that we ate tostadas, but like the, the time when it was special when I was a little kid, it was probably, you know, five, six, seven, eight, and I would eat all the way around the edge of the tostada first until I had like this like middle piece that was just like, covered with all the like the goodness because all the real goodness was in the middle you know when you make the tostada <laughs> so then I like take these big bites of this like you know gooey mushy middle. My mom made the tostadas with pretty simple ingredients. Uh, it was tostada shell which she would fry up herself. I think the dough wizards at El, Old El Paso hadn't invented the preformed shell yet. Uh, so it's just the shell that she'd fry and then some black beans like Rosarita's refried black beans uh, A little bit of cheese on top of that then melted, you know in the oven just crisp the top and then pretty much some tomatoes and some lettuce uh, Maybe if it was a special night, we'd have olives, you know chopped black olives and some avocado um, Always a little salsa around and that would be drizzled over the top Today when I eat tostadas, uh, I have a different feeling than I did when I was a kid because really the circumstances were that both my parents worked, like a lot of families in the 80s, you know, just trying to make ends meet. And um, so my mom would get home from work late and she needed to get something on the table for dinner. So she'd whip up a batch of those. So now when I eat them, I kind of think about like my parents and how you know, how they worked really hard to raise a family and how kind of ingenious it was that, and uh, practical. Uh, here's something great everyone likes. Let's make it, you know? And I think of those times and being a kid and uh, there's always that little bit of like additional respect that goes in for my parents when I eat a tostada or think about it. You know? So since we want to share this with our kiddos and teach everybody how to make the tostada, mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Sounds good. If you're good. down. So we are going to make, uh, to start, because of course the tostada, you said, has mm -hmm. the nice crispy chip corn chip base, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So we're going to make those from scratch. All right. And so what we have is some masa harina, which is just ground corn. And you get this like any grocery store? Any grocery store mm -hmm. on the Latin food aisle, usually at least here in Arizona, we're pretty easy to find, but uh, depending on where you are, you might have to go to specialty market. But the great part about this is it is equal parts of the masa to water. Oh. Super easy, right? Nice. Mm -hmm. So we've got two cups there, and then I've got two cups of water. Although I'm gonna kind of do it in stages, because this is where we do like some grandma style cooking, right? Where you right. kind of eyeball it and kind of look at it, see, is it enough liquid, is it not? So what kind of texture should I be looking for? So we want it so that it, it's definitely kind of spongy feeling, um, definitely liquid, but it sticks to itself. So it shouldn't be all kind of crumbly. Uh -huh. We can see how it's kind of coming together. Mm -hmm. And then just in terms of like how long to mess with it, the longer you mess with it, the softer your tortillas will be. Oh, really? Yeah, so you want to make sure to really mush it down and work it like four or five minutes. Uh -huh. 
totally reasonable. Does this have gluten in it? It's gluten free. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. This is an accidentally gluten free recipe. Seems like we do a lot of that. I know. I don't know what that is. I'm not a gluten free person. We don't have celiac, but yeah. Yeah. accidentally yeah. gluten free quite frequently. That's right. I've never met anyone who's like, I'm a gluten freak. <laughs> I just got to get that gluten. No, I know some people like that. I yeah. know a lot of people <laughs> like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know who you are. <laughs> gluten freaks. <laughs> Sorry, gluten freaks. There's no gluten in this today. Give me that gluten. <laughs> <laughs> it's gluten rage. <laughs> Getting low. So now that we have thoroughly beat this to a bloody pulp, we've got a nice little muscle ball here, yeah, right? And I so love it. we just smash this and make one giant tortilla out of it. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> no. We're gonna make these small. Because how big were the tortillas that your mom did? Ooh, um, smaller than the like if you get a tostada in a restaurant, it's like pretty big usually. Yeah. You know, uh, these my, my mom's were a little smaller, you okay. know, maybe about the size of the size of your palm probably. Okay. So that's what we will do today. Okay. So here's what we want to do is you just take off a little piece. Mm -hmm. Kind of flatten it out with your hand. So today we're doing this with parchment paper. Typically what's recommended is wax paper. Oh. Uh, just because it's a little bit easier to work with. But we were out of wax paper. I don't know, did you use up all the wax paper? I did not. No. <laughs> uh. So we're using parchment today. It works just fine. Of course, if you have a tortilla press, that's the ultimate. Oh, uh, yeah. So we need to invest in one, but we don't have one, so we're doing it by hand. So this is the non-tortilla press method. So you take the parchment paper or wax paper, and then you just fold it over so that you've got the tortilla in between. Yeah. Take a rolling pin. Right. Don't beat your husband with it. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just start flattening it out. And I like to kind of work it little by little because if you apply a bunch of pressure all at once, you're going to have like a wonky shaped one. Yeah. None of these will be perfectly you know, round, but. But that's the sign that they're homemade. Well, exactly, right? It's wabi-sabi and mm -hmm. super fancy. So we work it and you want it pretty thin. Because if they're too thick, they're going to start to get gummy on you. And once yeah. you fry them up, they're not going to be that nice, thin, and crispy. Mm -hmm. So, But you also don't want to go too thin and it falls apart on you. I so see. this looks just about right. See, it's a little more square. Yeah. But you can also cheat it oh. and just take a little knife and run it around and yeah. make it circular. And what's great is because you cannot overwork this dough, you're going to just take this and throw it back in with oh. the others and it gets reincorporated. So you're not wasting any if you trim yeah, it. Yeah, and that's totally round. So now you have, over here, we have a clean, non-greased, mm -hmm. dry skillet yes. over a nice hot heat. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the frying oil. But go ahead and take this ever uh -huh. so gently and throw it on the dry yeah. skillet right there. And you'll start to see it kind of bubbling up a little bit. That's exactly what you want. That's mm -hmm. a good thing. Um, but you don't want it so hot that it just like burns it. So it's right. kind of like a nice medium high heat. So this is just going to give our tortilla what? A little char? A little... No, it's actually going to cook that flour so that oh. it's going to bind together and you'll get that right texture. It'll be nice and a little bit chewy. Gotcha. Be perfect. Okay, so we start to see we've got some steam coming off of it, which is perfect because there's water in there. So it starts mm -hmm. to steam. And so once you see that, then you just flip it. And then that looks like a corn tortilla. All right, so that's probably pretty good at this point. It mm -hmm. might get a little bit of browning on it, which is totally fine, but this looks pretty good. We got those hot hands. So if you just wanted tacos, you could just do it like that right now. Oh, nice. Ready yeah. to rock and roll, but we're going to fry it. That was so easy. Yeah. Like, why <laughs> this wouldn't, is not rocket science. Why wouldn't you do this? Like, Well, it does take a little bit of effort, right? You yeah. Know, just in terms of compared to buying a box of pre-done shells. Pre or, yeah. but, mm -hmm. but these taste a lot better, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have the oil, and I'm using vegetable oil today, um, and I've got that, what have we got that at, 375? Yep, 375. Very important to have the temperature. So I would say for these, between 350 and 380 is just about right. If it's higher than that, these will freak out, and if it's lower than that, they'll just become super greasy. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do the honors. All right. So yeah, I do you can do it either way. Just don't get fried. Don't sue me if you injure yourself. <laughs> and just leave it. Oh. Just leave it. It starts to gonna puff up and do some things. It's totally cool. Yeah. Completely that, normal. That's where I fail as a chef. I'm always like poking you things. You want to play with I things. I want to play with it. And I say, leave it alone, man. Yeah. Just let it do its thing. Because what's gonna happen is we wanna make sure it stays in there long enough. It's not gonna really change a whole lot of color, which mm -hmm. is usually a way to tell if something's done frying. Um, this would just kind of eyeball it, I'd say about a minute and a half per side, which mm -hmm. is just about right. 
So what do you do for a minute and a half? Mm. <sighs> one, two, three, go. Oh. Uh, one, two, three, go. <laughs> one, two, three, go. Ah! <laughs> So what we start to see though is a little bit of browning around the edges ever so slightly. Woo! Nancy getting excited. So just watch out because you know these are sort of flat and there's a lot of air pockets in there. So mm. get a little bubbly. Just be careful, right? All right, so we have everything now to assemble our tostadas. Mm -hmm. We, of course, made our corn tortillas, yep. which look great. And then we also have my black beans. Uh-huh. The which... musical fruit. <laughs> I have been making these black beans though since like forever, right? Yeah. You remember back in New York, I used to make these? I do, and that was kind of awesome. It was, I mean, a little taste of home. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yep, and they are completely vegetarian, vegan, and accidentally gluten-free. Yeah. Uh, so I do make those from fresh beans and pressure cook them along with a couple cloves of garlic. Uh, mm -hmm. and then some chilies, they are bolt, which some folks might want to nix those because we're, we're kind of spicy around here, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. We got that little southwestern palate and our kids like the spicy stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, if you're worried about having spicy stuff, then you can go ahead and nix the chilies, maybe throw something else like some diced green chilies Ooh, or something yeah. like that. The mm -hmm. chilies they are will have a nice little punch though that I like and then a little cumin, a little paprika, uh -huh. and then just let those hang out and then kind of mush them up with the back of the spoon. Oh, the yeah. mushing action will just mm. make them really nice and creamy. So that's the beans. And then mm -hmm. I also made some pico de gallo, which pico de gallo, what does that translate to? The beak of the chicken. The beak of the of chicken. The rooster. Oh, the beak of the perfect. rooster. Perfect, perfect. We love roosters and chickens around here. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the pico de gallo. I did uh, some tomatoes, which I diced up along with some red bell pepper, mm -hmm. a poblano pepper, a bunch of garlic, because mm. we like a lot of garlic. And then I also threw in there some chopped cilantro, which if you don't like cilantro, I'm sorry, you don't like pico de gallo. And also some lime, because I love fresh lime juice. And then yeah. don't forget the salt to hammer at home, but it is a pretty simple, oh, I also throw a little avocado oil in there just Ooh. to give it a little uh, silkiness and texture, but it's really healthy, really light and simple. Mm. And then we got cotija. Cotija, Ooh. And you, you commented on this cotija. I did, I, sometimes you get cotija and it's like glorified craft Parmesan. Mm. You know, it doesn't have a lot of flavor, it doesn't have a lot of smell. Yeah. But this has a nice bit of funky, Yeah to it. That good stuff. N not off-putting at all, like no. a good cheese funk. Good cheese funk. Yeah. So we got a good funky cotija, yeah. which um, I did just get at the grocery store, but I got the more expensive brand than the cheaper oh, one. So. so maybe maybe smell the ones at the grocery store and see, yep. see who's got the funk. See who's got, who's got, got the funk. funk. <laughs> We've got the funk. And then the all-important. Avocado. Yes, which this is an important part of the tradition, right? It is, yeah. This, this is one of the things that was special when we yep. had some avocados around. Oh, man. So this is a special day. Yeah. We've got the avocado nice and ripe and green. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and assemble. What is the proper order mm. of tortilla tostada assemblage? Well, it's really got to go. I mean, pretty sensibly. You got your tortilla. Mm -hmm. You got your beans. Okay. Then your cheese. Okay. Then your other fixings. Accoutrement. Yeah. After after you get the cheese on, it's all up to you. All bets are off. Okay, yeah. well let's go ahead and bean it up, kiddo. All right. And then that's a tostada. Does that That's look like a respectable to tostada? That looks really good. Well, do we serve this to mom? Yeah, oh my gosh. As a thank you for all of her many hard years of working and yeah. doing dinner despite working a full-time job. We should do that. Yeah. Mom? Here's to you, mom. These tostadas are for you. Cheers! Cheers! Well, this is super crunchy. So mm. if you, your complaint is that store-bought tortilla uh, shells are not crunchy enough, make your own. Mm-hmm. And they really weren't, I mean, they are labor intensive. This is probably not something to throw together right after getting home from a long day at work. Right. But easy enough. And you can pre-make these. So mm -hmm. you can definitely make them ahead of time and then fry them up when you're ready to sure, go. Sure, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, make a mess of shells and then they'll be ready to go on totally. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Ryan, did we have tostada success today? I think we did. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Took I mean, you back to your childhood? It did. And like the recipe is 
updated and it's sophisticated. It's really, it's both like where I was then and where I am now. Hey, there we go. A little bridging of uh, mm -hmm. time and gap. Yeah. So if you guys want these recipes for the beans, the pico, and uh, the tostada mm -hmm. chip, tortilla thing. If you want those recipes, I've got them linked down in the description box below and over at JoniSimon.com. So you can remake these in your kitchen and spread a tradition to your family as well. So mm -hmm. thank you to Ryan for joining us on this episode. Aww. If you have any questions, please let us know, comment down below, and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you get notified every time we've got another family recipe. So thank you for joining us, you mm -hmm. guys. And uh, should we say anything special? Tostado you later. <laughs> Bye, guys.